Welcome to the Donovan and Jorgensen Heating and Cooling Friday Night Rivals pregame show. I am Mike McGivern. Thank you so much for joining us. So it's hard to believe, but it's already week seven of the high school football schedule. Man, this time of year, most teams and coaches have a really good idea on the identity of their team, who they are. They run the ball, they throw the ball, and then who's who in their conference? And when it comes to this conference, the Southeast Conference, it's been Franklin at the top with Oak Creek right behind, and then who's next? It's been a year-to-year thing. We're seeing Horlick, schools like Indian Trail and Bradford have made some noise in the past, but recently we're seeing cases of the program that have a number of people talking about them. Tonight's Southeast Conference matchup between Oak Creek and Racine Case should be a good one. So let's break down the Eagles from Racine Case. They come into tonight's matchup with a record of 6-1 overall and 3-1 and in conference with their only loss to Franklin where they lost 27-14. We are now joined by the head football coach at Racine Case High School. He is Anton Graham. Hey, Coach, uh, before we get into case football, there's a lot of things to say congratulations to you about. Most recently, Anton Jr. was born. It's been quite the week for you, Coach. Yes, you know, it's been busy. Um, I was blessed for having my third child Saturday night. Obviously, a pretty fast turnaround after a big homecoming win Friday night against Indian Trail. Um, so Saturday, kind of woke up, got to the hospital, find out that our baby's about to be born. And you know what? It went fast, but truly blessed, I guess. In the realm of things, probably the best timing it could happen um, on a Saturday, allowing me to still be able to talk with the coaches slightly on Sunday about the coaches meeting, um, still be able to slightly talk with them heading into Monday. Uh, and then Tuesday, I was able to finally get back to work a little bit for at least about an hour. Man, Coach, you're right. Timing-wise, I was going to say to you, you know, for the fourth one, we might want to have the baby in the off season, but that's certainly up to you and your wife. And and as I told you before we started talking, you all kicked your covers like a lot of us, Coach. What a beautiful wife, beautiful family you have. Congratulations Thanks. on that. Thank you. Hey, uh, second thing before we get into Rasique's football, uh, the WFCA has named you the Marge and Dick Rundle Positive Influence of Coaching Award coming up April 25th for the WFC yep. Hall of Fame Banquet. Congratulations on that. Had to be, an, I, I, what a great honor that is. Yes, you know, honestly, um, it's humbling, you know, to get that award, especially to get it prior to the season. You know, I received a phone call in the summer about it. So it kind of gave me something to head into the year and, you know, made me look a little deeper into what I'm doing. You know, sometimes you need that reminder as a coach. Yes, obviously you want to win football games and you want to see kids go to the next level. You want to see all those things. But also reminding yourself that, you know what, um, for some of these kids, we are the main person in their life that are there to help them. We're the main person there to be positive. And we need to make sure that we're more than just a coach. We need to make sure we're doing more than just helping them on the field. We need to make sure off the field they feel the same love. Hey, Coach, um, so doing some background and, and doing some research for this interview, I, I read um, read a piece at UW-Whitewater where you played football that your, your best memory of playing high school football you played at Park, and when you yes. guys played against Case, and now you're coaching at Case, you know, that that had to be a little turnaround for you coming back to Racine and giving back as a coach to be at the school that, that you loved to beat when you were playing. Well, the the I guess the full backstory behind that is I actually started at Case. So I was at Case my first three years, um, and then my dad was coaching at Park my senior year along with Dennis Thompson, who happens to be my godfather. And, you know, I just, I wanted to play at home. So, you know, I transferred over to Park and it was great to be able to play for my father for the first time in my life. And I enjoyed my senior year and, you know, that year being able to go back to Case and play against the guys that I had been with for three years. Um, Still to this day, it's one of the most fun I ever had playing football. You know, we went out there and uh, there was a lot of, a lot of chirping, you know, but more so in a positive way and in a good way. And, you know, after the game, we shook hands. There was no bad things. There was no bad beef. Um, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. And then, you know, to now sit here full circle almost and have the opportunity to come back and, you know, be in the building that I once walked these halls and I once, you know, wanted to be a part of that team that changed the, the camaraderie and changed everything at Case House High School. And even though I didn't get the opportunity to do it as a player, it's the true blessing to be able to do it now as a coach. You know, coach, and you're doing that. And and in the beginning of, of this show, we talked a little bit about You know, when you talk about that conference, Franklin has has been at the top for a while. Oak Creek has been second for a bit. And then it's been, you know, Horlick has has made a little noise throughout the years. Park, 
um, Racine or uh, Kenosha Bradford Indian Trail. But man, you guys right now are the team that everybody's talking about. Who are uh, you kind of coming up now and going to challenge both Franklin and Oak Creek. Coach, you're six and one overall, and and I'm wondering, did you know coming into this year that you guys had a chance to be this good? Absolutely. You know, I mean, these kids had one heck of an off season. You know, one of the biggest things we talk about um, is what we do off the field. You know, we have a motto called "Earn Your Wings," and that kind of keeps us going almost all off season. So, you know, the boys' grades are tracked, their attendance is tracked, everything that they do, we monitor. Um, we don't give away things because kids are seniors. You know, we don't do senior first, junior first, or anything like that here. Um, it's wings first, you know, so you earn everything in this program. You earn everything you have. So, you know, we kind of keep it going year round. Last year, we were able to raise our team GPA almost a full point. Um, you know, I think we had a team GPA of almost 3-2. Our freshman class really hit it tough. They were over a 3-5. And we used that, I think, to almost propel us forward and say, hey, you know what? We, we won the classroom now. Let's make sure we win the weight room. And I think we won the weight room this offseason. You know, when we went to seven on sevens this summer, I kind of told guys, you know, two years ago and even last year a little bit, our, you know, our jerseys were a little big and, you know, they didn't necessarily fit our boys the way they fit this year. Whereas when you look at our football team this year, I think you can see our boys were in the weight room. Hey, speaking of this year's team, I want to talk about a couple of players, Coach, that really, when you when, when people watch our game coming up next, um, guys that jump off the, the, the film and, and the camera at uh, at people, the quarterback, um, Leo's had a really good year. And yeah. um, he's a kid that can can spin it a little bit, and he throws it, and he's got some receivers out on the out of the edge that, that have a lot of speed. But he's a kid that, that owns that huddle, and he's had a good year for you. Yes. Um, you know, I couldn't say enough good things about Leo Chiapetta. For him to come in as a kid that had zero varsity starts coming into his senior year, he has absolutely just went off. You know, it's probably the best way to put it. You know, he's turned into a leader for us. He runs the show. You know, I just had to talk the other day with the offense coordinator. The best thing about him is he doesn't really get shaken. You know, he can throw a pick and he'll look right back and realize he made a mistake and be ready to go. Um, and for, uh, halftime of that Franklin game, I think he grew up a lot. You know, we went into halftime and we were down 27 to nothing. Right. And you know what? There wasn't one bit of fear in that kid's eyes. There wasn't one bit of shake in that kid's eyes. He was already talking to the offense, telling him, hey, we're going to get this together. We're going to go out there. We're going to get this offense rolling. And with what he's been able to do, man, I just, I love it. I think our offense has almost taken another step. You know, you look at the past two years, uh, we had a good offense, no knock to anything we had, but I think he has taken it to a new level. I think he's forced teams to truly respect that pass game. And you know what? Teams know that when we come out there on a Friday night, we can throw it around a little bit. Yeah, and, and Coach, when you have uh, Lincoln Meyer and Michael Farr, uh, guys that are catching the ball for him and, and seemingly getting open on, on every play, um, it, it's great that he's he's been able to – you know, just to play as a senior, and, and that's unusual, especially at the quarterback spot. One other kid I wanted to talk to you about, Mashai Grayson, uh, he's a linebacker. He's a kid that that will come up and hit you, and he seems to be in the right position all the time in the, the videos that I watch, Coach. You're, you're He's a great kid to have on the defensive end. Yes, no, he's huge. Um, so, you know, Mashai is one of four brothers. Um, two of them have graduated, went on to college. Uh, Javion Trice is at Lakeland, and Michael King is at Concordia St. Paul. Um, and now it's his turn, you know, and I think he's been waiting for it. Uh, he's played since he was a sophomore, made some big plays for us as a sophomore. Last year as a junior was was over 100 tackles, and now this year as a senior, you can see it, he's ready to go. You know, the physicality he plays with, the intensity he plays with, he is the leader of our defense. He's right there in the heart and soul of it, man. That that kid is a he's a football player. Well, my Shea Grayson is a kid that's gonna people are gonna notice him tonight, coach. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Again, congratulations on on Thanks. the new addition to your family. And I think it's it's wonderful that on April twenty fifth you will be recognized up at the WFC Hall of Fame banquet. I really appreciate your time, Coach. We're going to get to a break, other side of the break. We'll be joined by Joel Park, head football coach at Oak Creek. This is the Donovan and Jorgensen Heating and Cooling Friday Night Rivals pregame show only on My24.